So this first video that we're going to watch this morning, I think it's pretty rel relevant because we did some siege. It's been frustrating. And uh, this is from Level Cap. And he said, Siege of Orson is impressive and broken. And um, it kind of feels that way. But I also think um, Siege of Orson is impressive and the entire game is broken. So that's kind of the problem here. And I think... Um, in a way, people are giving Siege uh, a lot more problem or a lot more trouble or, or more angry at Siege and the design of Siege without recognizing that FPS AI and the turrets are actually supposed to be punishing and damaging and good and reactive, and they're not. And what would Siege of Orison be like if they were? So let's see level caps uh pov on siege of orison um and i'm sure i'll share some of my opinions as well i just soloed the entire last platform of the new siege of orison fps event in star citizen and that's not a brag but more of a critique towards star citizen's fps combat mission design server latency and overall ai design now to yeah i mean like how can we blame all of those things when it's really just one of those things. Today's video, I'd like to give constructive feedback about the new Siege of Orison mission in Star Citizen. My goal is to point out the design flaws with the event and give some suggestions for making it better. And if I'm being honest, I'm also a little bit concerned about the abundance of overly positive feedback regarding this new mission, saying things like Siege of Orison is amazing and I've had some of my best Star Citizen experiences while playing Siege of Orison, because while I am very happy that people are having fun playing the FPS side of Star Citizen, as somebody that comes from an FPS heavy background of gaming, I found yeah. the new mission to be extremely lacking and I fear it'll be seen that way by many people coming into Star Citizen from just other genres of games. Personally, when I bring a gamer friend into Star Citizen, it's to show off the game's scale, the planetary details, and the amazing spaceships or cool events like Xenothreat and Invictus Launch Week. Sadly but like, Xeno suffers from the same thing. Like, up until now, I don't think the F... Uh, I was gonna say FPS AI, but the, the ship AI have been like, that dangerous. And in space, they mostly are not, but in atmosphere, sometimes they're kind of scary, right? So, I, I like, I don't think you've, if you've shown them a uh, Xeno threat, I don't think you've shown them too much uh, either, but maybe like, at the time, he's like kind of much more new to ship combat. I bet you if he did Xenothreat today, he might find it a little bit repetitive and boring as well. But yeah, I guess that big explosion is a little bit more oh, uh, monumental and a big deal than at the end of Xeno than however uh, Siege of Orison ends, right? Sadly, I don't think I'd want to bring any of my gamer friends into Star Citizen to show them Siege of Orison, which honestly feels a little bit out of character for this game, and I want to make sure... Which I find funny because you show them the scale and all those other things, right? So, uh, for me, I think the, the most impressive thing about Siege of Orison, which is the only thing that really can't break, is how big it is, how uh, cool, like the design of everything and how it kind of feels like an escape from Tarkov map with, it just doesn't have the escape from dark Tarkov. Oomph, you know, that CIG has the appropriate feedback from all spectrums of gamers to make sure that siege is as good as it could be. Now the event itself is designed to bring a large number of players together to fight an overwhelming NPC presence on the floating city platforms of Orison and eventually defeat their leader. The concept is certainly fun, but unfortunately the execution is lacking. I played the event three times. The first was in a fire team of two coordinated people. The second time I joined some randoms with a party of seven. And the third time I just went in solo. Now aside from bugs that prevented some mission progress in my second playthrough, well, my solo playthrough was kind of alarming in that I was able to complete the hardest part of the game completely by myself. And again, this isn't a brag. The gameplay in the background is 
is this play session, you can see that there isn't really any sort of high level he's, or crazy FPS skills on display here. At. Just kind of and basic FPS walls. stuff. As long as the enemy AI were approached somewhat methodically and you searched around enough to make sure you don't miss any of them hiding behind a little piece of cover, a barrier, or in a bush, you could pretty much ensure that you weren't going to take any fire. Now, my intention wasn't actually to even attempt this mission solo. I just literally didn't see anyone else while I was progressing. Based on the chat, it really only seemed like there was a handful of players attempting the mission at the time. Now, once on the admin platform, I cleared what must have been well over 100 enemies, including the Lieutenant and Ren, and then I shut off the final IFFI system. For anyone who doesn't know, this mission is supposed to be a 50-ish player coordinated assault. However, yeah. the of Orson, despite its artistic beauty and set design, is riddled with design flaws that remove the challenge and need for teamwork. I've is played well-designed uh, for players. Is that design flaws? I mean, I, listen, I trust level cap more than I trust myself on FPS design. But is it design flaw or is it that the the AI never fought back at you? Because like we start out with a hundred. I killed a hundred AI on the last platform. Well, if if any of them were good. Maybe you wouldn't have. I mean, maybe you would have because it's level cap and he actually plays FPS games, but player co-op games that were so challenging that when trying to complete them with three players, it was basically impossible. But in Star Citizen with the Siege of Orison, it merely gives the illusion that a large group of players are needed to fight the overwhelming numbers Sex of Vandals, Ninetales. But the reality is that a single player with nothing special, medium armor, thank you very can much. beat the whole thing solo and that's without cheesing your way through it. That's a real problem in my opinion, because I think most FPS fans, myself included, get joy from challenging gameplay. I want to team up with my friends and almost die. I want to get overrun by the enemy. I want to have to fall back. I want nail biting moments. Work. And so far the Siege of Orson has provided very little of that. Now, before I get deeper into the flaws of this event, I would like to first give CIG credit where credit is due. The developers okay. are trying to create a large scale campaign style FPS mission in Star Citizen's universe. And of course, this is an extremely challenging task and I've only ever seen FPS co-op done well with smaller groups of players like in Left 4 Dead, GTFO, Halo, or Destiny. So I certainly have to give them some credit for attempting to forge new ground here and doing something like this on such a large scale. The narrative side of the mission and the artwork are fantastic in my opinion. Yeah. I enjoyed the voice acting and the comms from both your commander and the enemy Ninetales commander. And they even threw in a cool moment. I think our commander is a little wordy, but um, yeah, obviously voice acting in anything I think is really good. So where you have to commandeer a crusader ship and fly it over to the final platform while under heavy gunfire, which is truly an awesome experience. And that was the best part of the event for me as it utilized what is already fun and established gameplay mechanics like boarding an A2, powering it up, dropping countermeasures, and trying to manage your shields while you combat drop a squad as you get torn apart by the enemy weapons. However, beyond that specific sequence, nothing else in the event really stood out or even took advantage of the things that make Star Citizen exceptional. Let's talk about the first and most glaring issue that simply has to be fixed for an FPS mission to be fun or challenging regardless of its scale or layout and that is the AI. The yeah. Ninetales soldiers in this event are incredibly slow to react. They never seem to engage in long-range combat. They don't have any sort of surprising weapons or tactics. Yeah, there's no snipers. There's no like grenade launcher. But yeah. Sticks, and they rarely seem to effectively push or overwhelm in numbers. There was some feedback from early PTU about the AI being too challenging or having too many of them, but it's simply not something I experienced during any of who said the AI were too challenging? My play sessions. As far as I can tell, they're pretty much the same as the bunker AI, which are just not impressive in their own right. While clearing that the was final you, admin smile. platform, I engaged it? countless enemies. The only time I even took return fire was when I didn't notice an NPC that happened to be well hidden or there were enough enemies that some of them just simply had time to react to their squad getting gunned down. See, like the the only question that I I would say to that is that PTU servers are better than live servers 
and maybe they got a situation where there was a decent tick rate and the AI actually were good because we've all been in the game and gone down to a bunker when the AI were decent. And what happened? You got surprised that they actually reacted and you couldn't play like you normally did and you got dunked on. So down the rest of the time it was usually pretty easy to down them all before any shots were even sent my way my weapon of choice was the fs9 machine gun simply because it offers 120 rounds before needing to reload making it ideal for soloing groups it's of course not needed to complete this mission it just ensured that my reloading amount was minimal it's almost like the ai group's reaction time is based on you having to reload between targets so that they have enough time to actually engage you after their teammates die and I'm not sure if their slow reaction time is due exclusively to server performance and low tick rate, or if they've actually toned it down to try and make the event. <laughs> accessible to everyone. But regardless, the AI are easy mode when compared to any other FPS campaign or co-op shooter that I can remember playing. Even playing something like Battlefield 2042 where they can fill a server with 128 bots, those bots are far more reactive and challenging to be honest, compared to these ones. To be honest, I don't even think they're capable Star Citizen simply has to make their AI way harder to defeat, forcing players to work together to achieve victory. And again, for myself and I think many other FPS fans, if it's not challenging, it's not going to be fun. And I yep. know that better AI performance may be locked behind tech barriers such as server meshing, so if that is the case, then hopefully CIG intends to improve their reaction time massively once that tech is available. Now, the other problem with I, AI is the, the, the lack is, of... Is, yeah, like maybe, maybe Level's still just a, a bit too new and hasn't had that experience yet. Um, they react instantly and they push and they slide and all of those things they can react if the server is good we've all well i don't want to say we've all seen it most of us have seen it if we've been around for a while maybe he just hasn't yet and like that that's the thing for me is we we can't sit here and blame game design on something that is uh you can't be the guy who talks about how amazing Star Citizen is and the scale and the locations and the this and then make the same argument that the FPS AI should be better, right? Because those two things go together and they're the reason why the, FP the FPS AI suck. Like, you can't be like, wow, everything is so amazing, but um, the FPS AI need to be better now. Like, that's not really how it works. The reason that they're so bad is because of the scale and all that, right? combat variety. Sure, there's about four different armor and weapon archetypes for the bad guys. Some of them have machine guns, others have shotguns, others have SMGs, but beyond that, there's really no surprises. I didn't encounter any... Yeah, maybe the guys who have shotguns would act a certain way. Maybe the guys who have SMGs would act a certain way. Uh, you know, maybe one day they'll be able to do snipers or whatever, right? But right now, they can't do anything um, because they're just bad, right? And... Again, I feel like the 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 criticism of the event is obviously you can be critical about it. I don't care, you know, say whatever you want. Your opinions are your opinions, but it's really hard to be critical about anything else uh, in the event until you see what the FPS AI are eventually like. The AI mounted on those cool minigun turrets. None of them had rail guns, rocket launchers, grenade launchers, grenades, or sniper rifles. Star Citizen's a game that's supposed to take place about a thousand years into the future, and the Ninetales don't even have World War I era weapon variety. There's no mortars, machine gun emplacements, minefields, sniper nests, searchlights, grenades, not to mention the <laughs> endless possibilities yeah, of what Star Citizen's tech could bring, Scanner drones that call in reinforcements, power armor enemies, <laughs> combat force fields, jump jets, tanks, APCs, air cover that engages ground oh, targets, man. and whatever other cool sci-fi and gadgets you can think of. None of that is here, <laughs> which sticks out like a sore thumb against what is clearly a high effort production when it comes to the art and narrative. 
Level cap, welcome. <laughs> welcome to quadruple A development. And uh, to quote my friend Razor, it, you know, if you want all of those things, you might need to pledge more. I just, here, I still feel like levels in a bit of the honeymoon stage. Because every time you see something in Star Citizen, you like this is the thing about being a Star Citizen backer, right? Is you look at the game and you go, wow, that's pretty cool. And then you always go, but it would be really cool if they did X, Y, Z, A, B, C, Elemental P, right? And then uh, you get to the point where I'm at and you realize that they only do A. And then they move on to the next thing. And then they don't come back and do B or C for like two years. So I stop kind of like wasting my breath on those things. And I stop wasting my mental energy on those things because it gets exhausting. Because you just go like, man, this game would be so good if. And then you get really excited. And then eventually you'll realize that that's not how they're making this game and it's going to get really frustrating for you. So, you know, level if you ever watch this video, don't get caught up in this because it's going to it's going to get frustrating, right? It's uh take the game for what it is. Let's see. Uh obviously feedback is taken and worked upon and they will take whatever you're saying and they will try to improve it. Uh, but I don't expect in the second iteration of Xenothreat for there to be all of those things. Although we did see gadgets on, uh, on the, the monthly report last month, I think so. Side. The lack of enemy variety also reduces the strategy needed to engage them or having to work together with teammates. There's no need to bring in special gear to complement your fire team. Nobody's. I mean, there is no special gear. That's the other thing, right? Most FPS weapons feel similar in amount of damage they do to a headshot versus body shots. It, it's not much of a difference in rounds. All armor has the same um, buffs, and it's just kind of like we don't have that choice in the game yet. It's like so. a designated medic or a designated sniper or heavy weapons guy. Hence we'll me just there, using one gun to take out everything where they're on at the right admin now. platform. There really isn't a need for sniping or using rail guns or rockets. You of course can use those things, but it's actually less efficient than just using a basic weapon. And aside from that, just kind of making the combat boring in itself, one of the main reasons I find this so disappointing is that despite the tons of in-game weapons and vehicle assets, very few of them are used or needed here. Also, there's a complete lack of defensive assets for the mission, like remote turrets or shields to make the AI positions harder to assault. Imagine having to pick up a railgun or rocket launcher to try and take out a cutlass steel as it circles around your party. Having patrolling tanks or APCs that needed to be dealt with before moving forward, movable cover that could be moved around using He's tractor beams, or player. having locked <laughs> loot containers, or even shortcuts that could be accessed with the cutter tool. There's golf courses in the environment that could function kind of like no man's land, where you would have to push up and take cover in the sand pits, as enemy remote turrets take shots at you from behind a shield wall or something like that, which could only be disabled from the inside. There could be things like high-tech security towers with incredible range, firepower, and accuracy that would punish anyone who was spotted by them they could have implemented like nothing that nothing that level is saying i feel like is uh any anything that cig probably hasn't already thought of or does like may want to do but then it, it comes down to the idea of the priorities the squadron 42 the you know, they put this out there. They'll probably try to improve it a little bit, and then they'll move on. Um, you know, when when you have a Battlefield franchise or something like that, you focus on the Battlefield franchise. Star Citizen can't focus on anything because there's too much, right? And, um, yeah, welcome to Star Citizen level cap. <laughs>
We'll see you on the dark massive side soon. fortified positions with tons of armor and enemies that required a huge amount of combat arms to break through. I even imagined a situation in which the final battle might have had a low flying hammerhead that was shooting you with its turrets and everyone had to work together to try and focus down its shields in specific areas with like rail guns and tanks and remote turrets. And in my opinion, there doesn't really seem to be a reason why that level of immersion and assets can't be used here. All right, Dark I'm Citizen has has all these incredible assets and tools to create scenarios that would be jaw-droppingly awesome. Yep. And instead, what we- And if the entire company was working on Siege of Orison, you would get those things. <laughs> and if Siege of Orison was in a vacuum, its own game, you would get those things. But it, we're just not going to get those things. It is Bunker AI walking around in small groups, having almost no appearance of yeah, defensive like strategy. Like, I'm not trying to mansplain uh, level cap here. I, I think Virgil puts it perfectly. This is hard to watch because we know what he's in store for, right? Like, Morphologist has been having a rough time with the game lately, getting really frustrated. And, uh, you know, like, you kind of... I've been around for 10 years. You kind of see the people who've been around for three now starting to... To, to realize the the pattern of things and it uh it can get quite frustrating and this is what it is man you know and occasionally returning fire to me it's not just a letdown on the basic fps formula of what makes fun and engaging co-op gameplay but also it's a letdown given what assets we have currently in the star citizen universe and the fact that so few of those are used or needed. Now, further exploring the teamwork side of the mission, the overall mission objectives don't lend themselves to a sense of working together. The lack of that, group objectives and an emphasis on single target tasks makes the gameplay feel like it's designed for a smaller group of players playing in their own instance. Most of the IFFI crates and lieutenants are found or killed by one or two players, making yep. everyone else feel like they're just tagging along rather than actually contributing to the progress of the mission. I feel like having objectives that require the collective players to eliminate X number of enemies or having to shut down 10 IFFI units to disable a platform would at least allow people to split up and feel like they're actually contributing even if they don't find the lieutenants themselves. I mean, what if it was more like a dungeon where you went from lieutenant to lieutenant to lieutenant to admin platform, everybody went together. You had to move together. You go to Solanke, then you go to what? The second one is Brushwood and then Hartmore and then Admin. And then you would just see like little carrots over people's heads and you would just go, you know? And it might move a little faster, the, the mission, but I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing. Sometimes it feels like it just carries on forever. And speaking of lieutenants, I'm not really a fan of walking enemies with bullet sponge levels of health. They feel very arcadey. Star Citizen is a game that's always struck me as something that's been a little bit more focused on the sim element of gameplay. And again, bullet sponge targets really don't lend themselves to that immersion. It's certainly Yeah, but I think Tarkov has that, that and Tarkov is considered one of the more immersive uh, FPS games. and. Uh, yeah, but that's fair. I, I see that perspective. It certainly would have been a lot cooler to allow them to be operating an armored vehicle or have a whole bunch of elite guards that you had to fight through before they would reveal themselves just so that the lieutenant fights didn't feel so weird. There's also quite a few quality of life mission upgrades that could be made to just make the general experience more inviting. Something like a triage tent at the first platform where people could set a respawn point would be extremely helpful to avoid segmenting players too much and also forcing the full objective. Yeah, except <laughs> you would have uh, somebody just standing there with a grenade launcher, just everybody <laughs> respawning, just getting blown up in the their completion bed. Completion before players are allowed to move on to the next platform with something like a countdown timer and UI that properly explain that everybody should be getting ready to move over to the next platform, I think would help everybody to get together, prepare, heal up, get their ammo ready and assault the next platform as a cohesive unit rather than trickling over as they realize that they what? have the opportunity <laughs> I didn't to know do that so. Was a thing. Overall, it seems like the Siege of Orison has a long way. 
I didn't know that there was guys in the boxes sometimes. That's hilarious. There you go for being a challenging and or rewarding event for me. And I do think I represent a lot of shooter fans out there that are similarly not going to be impressed with Star Citizen's FPS combat. That being said, I know a lot of people are enjoying the current version of the Siege of Orson, and I don't want to take that away from them. But within the context of the FPS genre, Star Citizen's event doesn't even come close to offering engaging gameplay or teamwork compared to other titles. And again, I'm a little surprised by this because it feels off brand when compared to the rest of the game's scale, fidelity, space combat, and attention to detail. Star Citizen blows everything else out of the water when it comes to its planets and spaceship combat, but when touting its FPS qualities, literally every other game blows Star Citizen out of the water. But it doesn't have to be that way. Properly utilizing the assets currently in the game creates... I don't know how to respond to that. I think he's just coming from the perspective that, like, you don't get the Star Citizen experience anywhere else. Uh, you know, like they be in your ship, come out of your ship, the space, huge planets that feel really big. Yeah, like you don't get that anywhere else. But every other game that he's probably referencing in that kind of has a, a game inside of it where we're not quite there yet. And... um Creating AI that use them well and even creating new defensive assets could turn a subpar FPS experience into something truly engaging. And to put more of a positive spin on things, the new 3.17.2 patch is overall a fantastic upgrade to the game with the increased player count, new missions, and quality of life improvements. The player count alone has breathed new life into the game and made most areas feel far more alive. And the tech that's coming in hopefully the near future may also hold the keys to unlock locking the enemy like for me I, I i look at the screen and what he's looking at right now and how are we not looking at this and going the scale of this platform is massive look at all of the ca cargo containers and stuff i don't know i guess coming from battlefield it's different maybe because battlefield really does have maps that scale like they're huge right like you go from on the ground up an elevator to the top of a building and then you're sniping down on the building so i can kind of see the perspective that he's coming from here is you know battlefield kind of does that really well right and star citizen isn't in this but yeah, okay. AI potential. I hope the developers are also thinking about the same types of upgrades for the Siege of Orison, and I see it as being an okay foundation with a cool story and environment to set up a more engaging event down the road. As with all the other events in Star Citizen, many tweaks and upgrades and additions have been made to them as they learn what works and doesn't work, so I hope we see similar treatment with the Siege of Orison. I'd be curious to hear what others think about the Siege of Orison. If you liked it, what specifically did you enjoy? And if you didn't enjoy it, well, what was the reason? As always guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off. Yeah, that, I mean, that was really good. I think it's just an example of what somebody sort of... Like, I know Level's not new to Star Citizen. He's been following it for a very long time. Um, but really playing it a lot more more recently. And I, I think you could just really tell that he's sort of kind of new to following it every day kind of thing. And it it just shows. And yeah, I feel bad because I know the scale and the beauty and these things starts to create expectations, but you can't really have expectations with these guys because they have said it from day one that they're going to basically throw in features at a not impressive level and then come back to them later. And the goal is to get all the features in at a not impressive level first and then make them impressive. So. Welcome to tier zero, Mr. Level. I'm sorry, man. It's not going to be very fun. But the, I think the big thing about Siege is I want to see Siege with actually awake AI. And then let's see how it feels. But um, 
I think the thing that I agree with level more than anything is the the way the objectives work. They are kind of the single guy to kill does make it not feel like this big event that everybody's working together for. It kind of spreads everyone out and objectives are completed when you're not at them. So it doesn't feel rewarding like you were a part of that and it doesn't feel like your traditional raid or um yeah just like that mmo experience for a big event something like that in a big event you kind of see the zerg of people moving from one objective to the next to the next and i think we could get that with this and i don't know if it if you if it takes a complete overhaul to do that right and it could be really really fun and uh, I, I'd love to see what they do to improve it and take our feedback and and I hope those devs don't some the specifically the devs that made this mission are some of my closest friends at the company and I know they worked really hard at this and I know that the FPS AI which is not what they work on is the thing that's holding them back the most and I feel bad for them man. And it's uh it's tough, but I think the biggest one that you can kind of put on their design is is the feel of the objective not being like a group objective and being more of an individual objective because it's just a guy to kill, so it's a little bit more of a a thing that can be soloed, and if it can be soloed, it will be soloed, right? So that's my feeling on this level. Thank you for the video and um. I actually got to play with Level Cap yesterday for a little while, so it was really nice to meet you. And uh, again, I don't want to sit here and like mansplain things or or Star Citizen explain things. I think he he has a good understanding of that, and he just wants things to be good. And it's just providing his feedback. And uh, yeah, I, I just think that feedback will be taken, but when it will be actioned on, is uh, is the thing that is going to become very frustrating. <laughs> Very, very frustrating.